The U.S. budget comes primarily from taxes. There are other things, but it's mostly tax money. 86%, depending on what year, look, year, what year you're looking at, we can round it down to 85, is from income tax of individuals and also the reflected version of it, payroll tax, which is taken out by businesses. This is to make absolutely sure at least half the taxes that are supposed to be owed by income are paid off. This is 86% of the actual funding that comes into the United States government. And they're paid both by the business and by the employees. Uh, this is taxes on wages, tips, and salary for wage earners. 6% comes from corporations. That means rich people pay 1 14th of what citizens pay. Well, no, it's from corporations. A corporation is usually made in such a way that the person running it can change hands all the time. And a large corporation can be run by somebody who, not only on paper, but literally is poor. But the corporations pay very little total tax. They're not relevant. Um, if you're trying to appeal to the people who are paying taxes, and you're the one representing them, you shouldn't be talking to corporations. Except, those corporations act as an engine, a financial engine, in a capitalist society to make it to where people can earn a living. So, you can have an argument one way or another. <clears throat> 3% of taxes are excise tax, taxing alcohol, tobacco, firearms, gasoline, betting, you know, all the sins and that sort of thing, and hundreds of other things that aren't listed there, but to be snarky, that's where it comes from, and this is federal we're talking about. The same amount is from other sources that are taxed. It could be anything. 1% is from estate tax. When people die, they pass something down to a relative and that sort of thing, or some other version of this. And then we have tariffs, tariffs and customs. Uh, it's 1%. <clears throat> That's the money that comes in. So the vast majority of it is, if you're an American, from people like you. Just ordinary people. 300 million people providing all of that money. And of course, we spend more than we get in. So it's just a giant shell game, you could say. How much is spent out of the U.S. budget? Well, if you read the title of the video, you might not like hearing this if you're part of a specific set of groups of people that desperately want to discuss anything other than corporations don't pay jack shit comparatively, and 86% of the money the U.S. government needs to not starve financially to death comes from people and from the businesses that give at least half the taxes that are owed. Uh, if you're an American citizen, you're paying like 30% tax on your written down wages, 15% comes from you, the other 15% comes from your boss being legally compelled to do it, to make sure that tax evasion doesn't really work very well. The spending in the U.S. budget is 23% on Social Security, payouts to people for various reasons. 17% is Medicare. Now we're at already 40% of the actual spending. The rest of it's kind of nickel and dimed. In some income security is 7%. that You'll have to look up what that refers to. Retirement for federally uh, employed individuals. It could be all sorts of things. <clears throat> 4%. 2% percent goes to veterans. 4% is spread out among lots of little things, hundreds of things, and one of those is NASA. It's not a major part of your budget for the country. And unless you're foaming at the mouth... Because I mentioned NASA or have it in the title of the video, you probably already understand that they don't get paid very much. Well, they get paid a lot of money, but out of the total amount that's spent every year, they don't get much. In 2019 dollars, using today's money, obviously it's a different number if you look it up per year, but using inflation-adjusted dollars, <coughs> the U.S. has spent... $650 billion on NASA since 1958. That doesn't sound like a trillion dollar budget or something else you might have read somewhere. Please understand that unless someone is under pain of perjury, or more accurately, most people don't even care about that, unless someone is an individual who can legally be punished to the fullest extent of the law about lying about something, you might have noticed there is no such thing, really. No one has to tell you the truth about how much NASA gets per year. It's 
per year about $10 billion in today's money. All from the annual federal budget that's passed by the U.S. Congress that acts as representatives for the people. There is an assumption people make who want NASA, number one, to be making a huge amount of a change in how much your taxes are, which is obviously a big fucking lie. I'm going to explain that in a minute. They want that to be believed, and they also want you to believe somehow that NASA has the ability to control their own budget or something. It's the representatives you all elect that decide this. It's not just the liberals. Every year that it has been controlled by the House and Senate, by mostly Republicans, NASA's budget has been allowed by them. Saying it's the damn liberals doing it, or even saying it's the damn conservatives, is bullshit. It was over a percent only. One percent of the entire budget. One below the amount you pay to, that we pay to veterans, way below it. It was over one percent only from 1960 to 1974. It hasn't been over one percent of the budget for many many decades. It peaked at four percent and above in 1964 to 1966 during the Apollo program, and that was half of the budget for NASA. The other half went to other things. So it would be, if we did a 1962-1974 budget for NASA, but didn't have the Apollo program, which people bitched about because of reasons I'm going to bring up, it would have been 2%, which means it would just be about as much as we spend on veterans per year. Since 1975, it has been under 1% or at 1%, depending on what year you're looking at, or less. In 2020, it was $22 billion of the U.S. government's budget. The budget was almost $5 trillion, so it was less than half of a percent. Usually, other, most years, it's actually just under 1% or half a percent, and it floats between them. That's not table scraps. That's still billions of dollars. But claiming somehow that NASA somehow sets its own money, or it creates projects that obviously you know, give them a great deal of money, is a lie. And it should also be pointed out that you will find people claiming very fervently that they do not have a bias and that they're absolutely stating fact. But these are also people who are willing to believe that they have the right given to them by a high authority to do a pious lie. Lying so that you believe a certain thing because it will get a certain outcome. You complain about your taxes, they complain about NASA. Veterans get more money by 4 to 1. By 8 to 1 or more, it goes to every other little project, or just retirement for federal employees. By much more than that, it goes for income security. That's, That's unemployment and shit, right? By a ridiculous amount, it's Medicare and Social Security, which are the majority uses of the money you spend each year as taxes. Deciding to lie to the American people by saying blame NASA or some other specific thing is a little weird. And what's funny is you may have noticed I didn't mention spend expenditures for the military. You can look up the percentage you want, but you might want to look at the left over here. Well, they're giving NASA more than they give the military. Okay. Someone's going to say that. I'm specifically avoiding saying military. Some of you are a specific variety of human that want the money spent on, quote-unquote, defense. Because it's good for the economy, not because you're defending the country. NASA produces an almost guilt-free amount of money being churned back into the economy. And it emphasizes it towards smart people. Yes, I'm invoking that. People who are fact-based. People who are very hard to manipulate, but not impossible. And people who do not follow orders, who are idealists, who will defiantly tell you, I'm not going to lie about whether this rocket will go into orbit. It'll kill somebody. And when you finally get some of them to bend to your will or bend the knee, what you get is things like the Challenger disaster that was caused by, what was it? O-rings or something? Because cutting corners and being capitalist was a good idea. Because they started trying to commercialize NASA because 
That's capitalism. In the 1990s, climate change denial political groups that were against earth science programs and schools teaching about how literally the water cycle works where water evaporates and forms in clouds and falls as rain, literally being upset with that. Claiming it was a pursuit of a political agenda, not to talk about climate change, but to explain how climate worked. Even the basic stuff like a plant takes in carbon dioxide when it's sunshine out and expels oxygen, and then the process actually reverses partially during the night. Explaining any of that was considered not just political agendas and helping climate research and teaching kids that science is something you do based on exclusively only reporting facts, which means you can't bribe them. They are not they are literally impervious to you saying, I'll fire you if you blow the whistle. They blow the whistle anyway. That kind of disobedience that's not what you find in the military or a police department or any of the other favorite sons of conservatism. Any idealistic kid that tells you, I'm not going to put down that zero over zero is an indeterminate. It means every number. It's a straight line in the graph. You're not allowed to say that in school. I was chastised for that. Until I got to college and that was part of the damn curriculum. You are told not to defy authority. Except in science. That's the whole fucking point. That means politicians can't do anything with you. They have to deal with you making a report and signing it, and then they have to bury it like they always do. But before the 1990s, they opposed NASA's Earth science spending and any spending as a symbolic issue because literally they saw NASA as heresy because the Bible didn't jibe with shit that was been coming down the pike since the 1960s and 70s, because NASA showed you things that weren't listed. Mama, the Bible says such and such, but we can see this video. They went into space and they can look back at the Earth. Or, more accurately, people didn't like being shown that they could make a simple mistake and not answer for it, and more importantly, couldn't acknowledge it, like my science teacher that didn't, or math teacher that didn't like me explaining that zero divided by zero, every number fits into it, which means it's a straight line in the graph. You got an F. No, you do. 